Hi everyone, this is Dr. Adelman, and I'm here to explain assessment two and discussion two, which are going to be due in the next two weeks by Sunday at 11.59. So for assessment two, I want you to read up on various disabilities and gain familiarity with them. And I'm asking that you become a disability expert, quote unquote, um, on two of these disabilities, and these are um, disabilities whose prevalence are rising in the schools and rising just in life. And if you're teaching in early childhood setting, or if you're an SLP, if you're a psychologist in an early childhood setting, you are going to encounter these two disabilities very frequently. And I'm talking about autism spectrum disorder and uh, ADHD, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It used to be called ADD. Um, now. It's been renamed in the past 10 or 15 years. So I want you to pay special attention to these two disabilities. For each of these, you're going to create a fact sheet. Now, it doesn't need to be in word format. It doesn't need to be in paragraph form. It can be in bullet um, format if you want, because fact sheets are really just the, the quick information that you need um, so you are more prepared to either... Uh, encounter this in the classroom or that you're helping parents with kids who have this, these disabilities. So in your fact sheets, and you can use whatever structure, um, setup, format you want, uh, you are going to talk about first the causes of both of these disabilities. Now you're going to do two fact sheets. They're going to be separate. This is not the same. They're not at all. They don't have very similar, many similarities, so I don't want them to overlap. So these are going to be two different fact sheets. First, what are the causes of these disabilities? There are theories behind causes of ASD and ADHD, so I want you to research those. Um, you can use your book, you can use the course content, you can Google for reputable, trustworthy sources, but make sure any sources that you use, you're going to bring them in into a citation so I see where you got your information. Fact sheets like this, it's very easy to cut and paste. Uh, make sure that you do not cut and paste. I'm very familiar with the book and the wording in the book and also other sources in, in Google. You know, I, I research for a living. So please make sure you take all of this information and you put it in your own words just to be safe and include your citations at the very end of your fact sheet. So we're looking at causes. We're looking at characteristics. Tell me a little bit about these disabilities. What do they look like? What can we expect? Um, you will find all of this information in your book. Diagnosis, how is it diagnosed? Um, educational implications. What does it mean in your classroom or in an educational setting if a student has this disability? What are the implications? The so what about the disability and how it impacts the student in the classroom? And then lastly, advocacy or support groups. Just give me a couple. There are several for both of these disabilities and I want you to become more familiar with these. In addition to the fact sheet, you're going to also do a video analysis on two different videos, um, one of a child with ADHD and one of a child with ASD. And this is for your field component for this class. It's going to all be integrated in video analysis because this is a full on, fully online class and I can't expect you to go into the classroom. You might have you know, full-time jobs and you're not able to. So I'm giving you these videos. In this video analysis, I'm asking that you use the video analysis guide that I uploaded onto Canvas, and that's broken down into three components. First, the running record. The running record is going to be an objective account of what you see. Tell me what you see. Do not bring in your interpretation. Don't depart from the video at all, but just if you see a child sitting on a floor, uh, picking up toys and dropping them, or filling up a bucket and dumping it out, then just say that. It's an objective report, a running record, a documentation of step-by-step step what you see. The next component is your interpretation. What kind of sense are you making of what, they, of what you're seeing? So if the child, maybe a child with ADHD isn't paying attention, uh, isn't integrating or, or being engaged into the group, tell me why you might think that. So from your running record, from your objective observation, you're collecting evidence, and then you can make some kind of assumptions on your interpretation of what's going on. Lastly, what are the conclusions? So based on your running record, the information you collected, and then your interpretation of that information, you're going to formulate some kind of conclusions 
or implications. What does this mean in the classroom? So kind of make sense of your, your inter interpretation because you've already brought in your own subjectivity and then you're going to formulate some kind of conclusions on these videos. And you'll see that the structure is uh, on the, the guide that I gave you, so do follow that structure. And you're also going to use Edpuzzle, which I'm giving you a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to do it. You're going to register as a teacher. It's, fr it's free. You're going to find the video, and then you can do a running record on Edpuzzle. So it's going to be built into this program, and you're going to send me a link to that. Lastly, the discussion. Now that you know a little bit about these two disabilities and the others that you read about, I want you to talk about which disability do you think would be the most difficult for you to encounter in the classroom, and why do you think that that would be the most difficult? Now make sure that you use the content from the course, the book, or any kind of other external research, and make sense of it. Make sure that you are showing me that your knowledge is growing through this discussion. Um, so you're going to tell me what disability is the most difficult and why, and then provide some steps that you might take to make yourself uh, more prepared to teach these kids in the classroom. And you're going to respond to at least one peer. Make sure that you use the structure that I give you in your syllabus, that you're responding in a more meaningful way, not just saying I totally agree or I totally disagree, but kind of engaging in a conversation. I'm looking for some real meat here in your um, in your peer responses. So all of these are going to be due Sunday, but not this Sunday. In two weeks, you're going to see that all of your modules are due every two weeks. So Sunday by 11.59. And if you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me.